Welcome back for more children's Torah stories. Do you remember what we learned about last time? Today's story is going to be called A Ehud, the left-handed. So he's not right-handed, he is left-handed. Many of us are right-handed, but some of us are left-handed. My sister is actually left-handed, just like Ehud, the hero of our story. Well, our story happens a long time ago in the land of... Which land is it? I forgot. Uh, the land of Brazil? No. Is it in the land of... Uh, Tanzania? No. The land of South Africa? Nope. The land of Israel? Yes, now I remember. This happens in the land of Israel, where the Jewish people were put. They forgot something so important. You know what they forgot, Yeladim? It's crazy. They forgot to pray to Hashem. And who were they praying to instead? Idols. Ah, please, Mr. Rabbit statue. All those silly things that they used to say. Well, Hashem was not happy with that. Not happy at all doing something so silly. Praying to idols. And it's so ungrateful. You know what ungrateful is, Yeladim? When someone was really good to you and you are not kind to them or you don't even say thank you. Hashem has done so much for the Jewish people. He took them out of Egypt and he brought them across the sea and he gave them the man in the desert and he gave them the Torah and he gave them the special water and he helped them win all the wars and he got them into the land of Israel and he gave them the whole country and he chased away all the bad kings. <gasps> and they don't even remember Hashem. They're praying to idols instead. That is crazy. Well, Hashem said, Jewish people, if you can't even remember me, I am not going to help you when the bad people come. And the bad people did come. Eglon was the king of Moab. And do you remember what was special about Eglon? He was big and strong and very, very fat. And Eglon said, <laughs> I'm in charge of you now, Jewish people. You must be my slaves. You must do whatever I say, or I will give you a smack on the head and put you in jail. What a nice man King Eglon is. Great guy, King Eglon. No way, he was terrible. Well, King Eglon also said, You must all bring me presents every single day. I want presents. More presents. I want more presents. I want more presents. I love presents. Well, that is what the Jewish people used to do. Yeah, King Eglon, we brought you some presents. Oh, that's good. More. Okay, we'll go back and get you more. Here's more bread. More! That was King Eglon. He wanted more of everything. Well, then the Jewish people were so sad and they were crying. <laughs> Things are so terrible. Why is everything so bad and so terrible? <gasps> Maybe... Maybe it's because we forgot about Hashem. Yes, clever Jewish people. That is right. That is why things are terrible. If you remember Hashem, He will make it good for you again. Maybe we should remember Hashem and ask Hashem, please Hashem, help us. Ta-da! Hashem sends along a hero called Ehud. Dun, 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 dun. And when Ehud goes to meet somebody, if he would meet, here yeah, we get another person. This was Otniel, remember? If Ehud would come to meet Otniel, Otniel would put out his right hand and say, Nice to meet you, Ehud. 
and Ehud would put out his left hand and say, nice to meet you also, but I don't know how to shake hands with a right hand and a left hand. Please use your left hand also. Okay, then they can shake hands nicely because Ehud was left-handed. And most people thought that a left-handed man was weak and not very strong. But we will see, Yeladim, that Ehud was strong and clever. Well, the next time it came for a present for King Eglon, Ehud said, I will bring the present and I have a special trick. And he got a long knife and he hid it over here. And he put it on his side like that so they wouldn't know where it was because right-handed people always keep the knife on the left side. But he was left-handed, so he kept it on the right side and they didn't know. So he came along with the present and here's King Eglon. More presents! More presents! King Eglon, I've got a present and he brought it in little bits and pieces. He didn't give him the whole present. He said, here's some of the present. Yes, more. Here's more of the present. Yes, more. Here's more of the more, 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 more. Kept coming back with more presents. And eventually King Eglon said, Oh, that was exhausting. Well, King Eglon, um, I've actually got something I want to tell you. But I don't want to tell you out here with everyone around. Can we go up into your room and I'll tell you there? It's a bit of a secret thing. Oh, okay. And up they go and they went into the room and where's my policeman? Uh, we will have a giraffe policeman today. And the policeman was waiting outside. Oh, nobody allowed in. I have to stay here to take care of the king. But, and Ehud said, but it's a secret. It's something very private that I want to tell him. Please, can I just tell him just by myself? That's fine, Mr. Policeman. Don't worry, I'll talk to him by myself. Okay, I'll just be waiting outside. Call me if anything is wrong. Well, in they close the door and Ehud says, King Eglon, here is my secret that I want to tell you. Yes, I'm listening. Is it somebody who's trying to hurt me? Yes, it is. Wow, you came all the way to tell me about somebody who's trying to hurt me so you can protect me. What a good friend you are. Well, I'm sorry, King Eglon, but it's not exactly like that because I'm the one who's going to hurt you. And he pulled out his sword. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, King Eglon, you have been mean to the Jewish people for a long, long time. But now I'm going to stop that. And he tied him up. And he put a gag on his mouth. And he said, now I am going to get the Jewish people to chase your bad army away so that we can be free again and we won't be slaves anymore and we don't have to keep bringing you presents all the time or else you'll put us in jail. That means, please don't do that. I still want to bust everyone around and be the king and make you give me presents. No, no, no. And he left him there and he climbed outside and he slipped out and he disappeared. And meanwhile, the policeman was waiting outside. Oh, he's taking so long in there for that meeting. What's taking him so long? Maybe he's resting. I don't want to disturb him while he's sleeping. I'll just wait and wait outside the door. Meanwhile, 
Ehud came running back to the Jewish people. Jewish people, Jewish people, I've got some wonderful news. The king is unavailable and the people don't even realize that he's not there. This is our chance. If we all come together, we can chase the bad people out of Israel and be free again. Hooray! Okay, let's go! Dun, 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 dun. And they come chasing, chasing, and here we're King Eglon's bad guys. Ah, what's that? The Jewish people are fighting against us. King Eglon, King Eglon, tell us what to do. <laughs> Oh no! We don't know what to do! What are we doing? Better all run away! Run away! Run away! Yay! We are safe again. Jewish people, do you remember who saved us? Yes! It was you who saved us, Ehud! No, no, no! Don't say that, Jewish people! That's how you got in trouble in the first place! Who was it who really saved them? It was Hashem. It was Hashem. Guys, it wasn't me. I was just the one that Hashem asked to do the job. But I'm not the one who saved you. It was Hashem who saved you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Hashem, for saving us. Excellent. Good Jewish people. Pat on the head for the good Jewish people who now remember that it is Hashem. Okay, now do you promise that you will always remember it's Hashem who helps you? Yes, we promise. Do you promise that you will teach that to your children? Yes, we promise we will teach it to our children. Okay, then carry on being good. Bye. Bye, Ehud. Thank you for helping us. Well, the good news, Yeladim, is that the Jewish people did remember how good Hashem was to them. And they remembered it for 80 years. That is a long time, 80 years. For 80 years they remembered. But then they forgot again. And they started saying, hmm... Who should we pray to today? I've got an idea. Let's go pray to the idols. Oh, man. Well, this kind of thing kept happening. They would remember what was good and they would remember Hashem. And then they would forget about Hashem. And then they would remember Hashem. But this time, they had forgotten about Hashem. And after 80 years, Ehud wasn't around anymore. And here is another king. And his name is King Yavin. Roar! He was the baddest, the meanest, the fightiest. And he had... The best, strongest general. He had a general called Sisra. Sisra was the boss of his armies. Now this is a really bad guy, Sisra. I know we used the same puppet for Yeshua, and Yeshua was so good, but this puppet is for Sisra. And Sisra is so bad. But Sisra was the biggest and strongest and meanest no one could fight against Sisra. He would just chase anybody away. And King Yavin was so clever and was also good at fighting. The two of them together had an army that was unbeatable. No one was stronger than them except Jeladim. Do you remember who was stronger than Yavin and Sisra? Who's stronger than Yavin and Sisra Yeladim? Quite right, Ginsburgs. Hashem is stronger because Hashem is the strongest in the whole wide world. Nothing is as strong as Hashem, but the Jewish people had forgotten about Hashem. 
And so Hashem wasn't helping them, and Yavin and Sisra were bossing them around, running into their houses, grabbing all their stuff. Imagine, if that's what you had, Yeladim, imagine if King Yavin would come running into your home. I am taking your TV and your fridge and your toys. Ha 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 ha! That would not be nice at all. Well, that's what they were doing. They were taking all kinds of things from the Jewish people. And the Jewish people were getting so sad. Why are they being so mean to us? If only someone could help us. I know who could help them, Yeladim. Hashem. Well, you can't come up with food. Well, we are very, very lucky because there are three heroes in the story Three ladies who were so good and so... Uh, three, two ladies and one man who were so good and so amazing. And they were the ones who helped us. Well, this is the first lady. Her name is Devora. Hi, Devora. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you. Devora, what do you like to do? Well, I have a beautiful palm tree... And every day I sit under my palm tree and Jewish people ask me what to do. And I tell them, can you see her lovely palm tree? Ah, uh, so nice in the shade of the palm tree. Well, one day Hashem told Devorah what needed to happen so that they would be able to chase away Bad King Yavin and Sisra to not bother them anymore. Thanks, boy. This is all part of her palm tree. So, one day Hashem told her what they needed to do to chase away King Yavin and General Sisra so he would not bother them anymore. Do you want to hear what that was, Yeladim? I can't wait to tell you, but that will be tomorrow. Bye!